I love you guys so much that actually this process took me almost two years from like mental start to finish. We waited too long where we were going to get leaves that were like some of the last batch of leaves. And I said, "Mm -mm, this is not going to work for me. We tested it. We tasted it. I was like, this isn't going to work. The girls are going to come for me for this. Okay. Hey, everyone. I'm Morgan Debon, a passionate entrepreneur and life advisor. With the Journey Podcast, you'll discover that success isn't about the destination. It's about the journey. I'm sharing stories of amazing people who've taken control of their lives. Join me on my own journey to discover the secret sauce behind reaching success with permission from no one else. Welcome back to another episode of the Morgan Debon podcast. Today, we are getting into one of my favorite topics in the entire universe, which is matcha and my love for matcha and morning routine. So if you have been thinking about how do I live a healthier lifestyle, how do I become a morning person, how do I have more focus and more impact with the work that I do every single day by spending less time, but optimizing my health and my wellness so that I can have more focus, this is the episode for you. We're going to get into it. Morning routines are so important. And I know you guys hear this all the time because people make ridiculous claims about how they wake up at five o'clock in the morning on TikTok. I am not one of those people, but I do wake up early. And I've always been a morning person. I think it's because when I grew up, I drove from the suburbs into the city. So I had to wake up early to get to school and get past the traffic. And I've just always been a morning person where I get more work done in the morning than I could ever do at night. When I wake up in the morning, my routine is very straightforward. I wake up and I just kind of like lay in my bed for 15, 20 minutes And I think or I meditate or I just have my eyes closed and I'm just like processing how I'm feeling. And then I get up and get ready and go to the gym or I get up and I just get straight to it. So I've either taken a shower that night or I've taken a super quick shower and I get started. Quick breakfast, matcha, get to it. My breakfast is usually really simple. It's something with protein, whether that's Greek yogurt with granola and some berries or like sourdough with eggs and bacon or sourdough with eggs and avocado, whatever it may be, always a balanced breakfast so that my energy is right and my cortisol and all of my things are not spiking. And then I usually have some sort of drink in the morning. I love the ritual of just like making your morning drink. Now, before, when I was earlier in my career, I was a coffee drinker. Not because I particularly chose coffee, but because coffee was just a part of the office routine when I was working in an office at Intuit. You had your kind of coffee station. You just go to the coffee station before you sit down and you pour in all your little creams. (laughs) And I was not one of those people who knew a lot about coffee, had really done a lot of research about the benefits or the impacts of caffeine on your body. It wasn't until my mid-20s that I started to have more consciousness around, wait a minute, maybe coffee is having an impact on my jitteriness and my reactiveness at work. And so I really learned about my nutrition and my wellness because of a consequence of some of the behaviors that I was having at Blavity. So let's get into it. When I was working in the office, you know, Blavity had a big office. We had a downtown office, downtown LA, beautiful like almost the top floor of the building, skyline was crazy, windows everywhere, floor to ceiling windows through the whole floor. We basically had a quarter of the floor of that building. And then we had a second floor right beneath us where our sales team sat. So we were really like popping, you know, that lot going on, a lot of people coming in, coming out. We had a receptionist. However, I was so stressed because I was a CEO of a really fast growing business. And I was in that transition from being a founder and having a small team of like 15, 20 to that scaling process of going to 30, 40 people and really maturing as a company where we had to think about things like maternity policies and time off and paid federal medical leave and all types of grown up company things that we hadn't done before. And I was the person who had to ultimately make the decision. And so not only was I trying to help our company grow and mature, I was also responsible for, you know, finance, HR, the content team, the design team, like 80% of the teams at the time, everything but sales, 
in engineering reported to me. <laughs> and so I was super overwhelmed. I would still get that morning coffee on my way to work. So I worked and lived about five blocks from each other in downtown LA because I really didn't want to waste time driving. So I could see my office from my apartment window like a lunatic. I, you know, I was a little tense. Sometimes. Don't be like me, guys. But anyways, so I would walk to work every day and I would just grab a coffee on the way. And I started drinking things like oat milk lattes and cute little Starbucks drinks as my route to work went past the coffee shops every morning. And what I found was I was being really reactive and jittery. I could get through a lot of work, but my energy felt rushed. Like I felt like I was constantly rushing through decisions, rushing through conversations, rushing through emails. I also lacked information retention. There were times when my co-founders would literally get so frustrated with me because they're like, you are changing your mind right now. Are you actually changing your mind? And I would feel gas. And I was like, I didn't change my mind. What are you talking about? But I was having a difficult time because I was making so many decisions in a short period of time, retaining information that I was changing my mind. I couldn't figure out or identify what were the causes. It was multiple causes that were causing me to be awake, alert, quote unquote, productive, yet ineffective with the impact of the work that I was doing on Blavity, my job as a founder, CEO, and then just generally my energy levels and happiness. So one day I hired this woman named Love to work at this company. She was my chief of staff. This was the first chief of staff I ever had. And Love is a vegan. And Love drank matcha every day. If you know anything about vegans, you know they have to eat a lot more volume of food than like the rest of us because they don't eat meat. So they need like more food to feel full. Love walked in every day with a double shot of matcha latte and all this food. <laughs> and I just remember being at meetings like, girl, you are still eating right now. Like, why are you bringing your food into this meeting? But I'm trolling her a little bit right now. Love still works at Blavity today, by the way. So I can say these things. But as I got to know her better, especially as you know, my chief of staff, so I usually work really, really closely with me. There were times when she had two cups of matcha instead of getting her double latte, she'd just get two super hot matchas and bring them in. And she'd be like, do you want one? <laughs> and I don't know if she did it intentionally, but I started drinking matchas because of love and fell in love with the actual impact that matchas were having on my ability to focus and not feel the crash of the caffeine jitter, still have the benefit of the energy boost. And that is how I was introduced to matcha for the first time and how I immediately saw the impacts of my ability to retain information and ultimately become a better boss and be more present in the day to day. Also was my first interaction really with the vegan. So shout out to love because the Midwest in me was like, I don't understand. I don't understand what's going on here. Now, many, many years later, I've kept matcha as a part of my morning routine and part of my daily ritual because it's helped me maintain energy levels without the crash. It is better for your skin. It has antioxidants in it because it's a green tea. It's not a coffee bean. So it's a green tea, just like when you drink regular green tea, it's a green tea that is shredded and ground into really, really fine powder-like substance. You pour water, hot water on it, and... You can drink it just like a tea, or you can put milks in it to make it a latte, add sweetener, vanilla sweetener, or whatever floats your boat. And it's just a delicious, earthy, yummy thing that I enjoy every single day. And I wanted to bring matcha to the masses because it's been so helpful for me, which is why I started my new brand called More Matcha. And we're releasing our first batch of matcha straight from Japan to you very, very soon. So you might be thinking to yourself, Morgan, there's no way in hell I am drinking matcha every day and replacing my pumpkin spice latte. And here is my rebuttal to you, sister or brother. One, pumpkin spice lattes are universal. But here's my thing. Yes, matcha uh. does have an earthier taste, but it's just like if you drink black coffee. If you drink black coffee... You're going to be like, this is earthy as hell. I don't want to drink this. 
this is dusty and crusty and very like strong. So just like a coffee beans that are just straight up water and coffee beans, you need to add something to it for it to taste better. So you can warm your milk, you can steam your milk, you can make an iced matcha latte, you can add vanilla flavoring, you can add all types of different types of sweeteners so that it tastes good. Just like your pumpkin spice latte is not just coffee, it has all types of other things in it that make it taste delicious. So on the More Matcha website, eventually we'll be showing you guys like how to make it, how to use different things. Like, you know, people go all types of crazy ways with matcha. They've got matcha strawberry lattes and blueberry lattes. I'm basic. I'm just like a regular vanilla ice latte or just regular warm matcha that's vanilla. But I do always add some sort of sweetener in it to knock off some of the earthy taste. And over time, you get used to it just like wine or just like coffee. The second thing that I hear is, well, the caffeine in matcha per serving is less than the caffeine in coffee per serving. And that's true. You are technically consuming less caffeine when you are drinking a cup of matcha. That's one of the reasons I've been able to keep that habit while I've been pregnant is because technically I'm only supposed to have a certain set of grams of caffeine per day. But with matcha, I'm like nowhere even near that limit. The reason it still works is because the burn from caffeine from matcha is more even. It burns evenly throughout the day as opposed to when you drink coffee, the caffeine from coffee has an immediate spike. So yes, in that first hour or two hours, you might feel like I have a more of an energy boost from coffee. Over time, the burn from matcha is actually one that's more healthy for you, healthy for your hormonal levels, and allows you to sustain that focus over a longer period of time. And for me, as an entrepreneur, obviously that's super important that I don't have big spikes of energy and then two or three hours later, I'm like, I need another cup of coffee. No, I'm not doing that. So matcha allows me to have sustained higher energy over a longer period of time and no crashes. So there's also no negative consequence to drinking matcha. I can drink matcha at five o'clock at night and still go to bed at nine o'clock or 9.30. Obviously, I'm pregnant because I'm saying 9.30. A normal person would go to sleep at 10, 30, 11. But you know what I'm trying to say, people, okay? If you have coffee at five o'clock, you probably are not going to be able to go to sleep as easily because it's like disrupting your ability to manage your energy and go to sleep. You're still super wired. So matcha in the afternoon is also very possible. And that's something that for me is a game changer because it means I don't have to just wake up and get to my cup. I could have it at 12 o'clock or two o'clock or three o'clock if I need to pick me up to get through another batch of work or get through a workout even. Sometimes I drink matcha instead of pre-workout because I don't want to be wired at night. Like a pre-workout, if you take a pre-workout at five o'clock after work to get to the gym, like you're still going to be awake. <laughs> you go to, like you're trying to go to sleep. Some people will drink matcha before their workout and then they're able to still have that energy boost, but you know, be able to go to sleep when they want to go to bed. The last thing that I hear all the time from people when they're like, they would like to try matcha, but they don't actually make the leap is they think it's too complicated. They're like, it's too many steps. And I think that whoever is the matcha marketer of the world or whoever decided that this was the matcha process, I'm like, I get it. There's ceremonial benefits to matcha, but I'm a bit of a basic bitch. And like, you don't have to do all that. Okay, you don't have to sip the matcha and like get the special little thing that people use to swirl the matcha in the special matcha cup. You don't have to do that, okay? I use an electric whisk. The cup I'm drinking my matcha out of you do have to heat the water, which you do with coffee anyways, and that's it. Like, it doesn't have to be that complicated. You pour the milk in there, throw some ice in there, call it a day, okay? So don't let the Instagram version of making a matcha prevent you from adding it to your routine or giving it a try. And the last tip I would give someone who's considering making the leap is the quality of matcha actually matters a lot. So in the same way, the quality of coffee matters, quality of matcha matters. If your matcha has a light green, yellowish tinge, it is a low quality matcha, which means that those matcha leaves were harvested in some of the last batches of the season. Matcha that you want is matcha that's in the first or second harvest of the season. And that will look like a bright green 
powder, deep green, bright deep green. Okay. It looks wealthy. If your matcha looks musty and crusty and dull, it's not going to hit right. And I think that's the other experience that we're seeing is that matcha is actually really expensive because it is genuinely an imported product. And so when we're going to random restaurants or cafes, they're using a really cheap matcha because they don't want to pay the price. So that's your experience with matcha is just like some random cafe down the street that's using a generic ass matcha. Then, yeah, it's probably going to taste really bad. But if you go to like one of my favorite places to get a matcha in L.A. is a place called Verve. Verve Coffee has a great matcha. Or if you live in New York, there's tons of places to get really high quality matcha. So if you go to a place that uses the right type of leaves, then it's going to be a richer, creamier, more delicious experience. And more matcha, my matcha brand, will give you that experience at home as well. So when you see the price, just remember, this is not a last batch, bitch, okay? This is a first batch, bitch. So I'm giving you the best quality for the right price so that you can enjoy this experience every single day. You don't feel like you have to go to a Starbucks, you know, and spend seven, eight dollars on a matcha. I love you guys so much that actually this process took me almost two years from like mental start to finish to the product to getting landed because we missed the season to put in our order for the matcha because matcha leaves are only grown during a certain season in Japan. And if we had waited, we waited too long where we were going to get leaves that were like some of the last batch of leaves. And I said, "Mm -mm, this is not going to work for me. You know, we tested it. We tasted it. I was like, this isn't going to work. The girls are going to come for me for this. Okay. We waited a whole nother year to get the right batch (laughs) and to make sure that you all are getting the best possible quality matcha. And frankly, we will probably hit supply chain constraints in the future because it's not like I can just, once we sell out of the product, I won't be able to just like go get more because I'll have to wait to the next season. So this is not a wealth grab for me. This is really a lifestyle thing that I wanted to share with something that I love with you all. So I hope that you try it. When it comes out, you can pre-order on more, M-O-R, matcha.com, like more for Morgan, matcha.com and put in your pre-order and I hope to hear about how matcha has impacted you. Peace, love, and matcha. Bye, y'all. Have a great day. Thank you for listening. Download the podcast, subscribe to the newsletter, and send me pictures of your matchas that you're making on Instagram. Thanks for listening to The Journey Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you leave a review and head to our Instagram and YouTube to leave a comment. I look forward to hearing how this podcast has made an impact on your own journey.